Jeremiah chapter 23. In Jeremiah chapter 23, um, verse 9, talking about the lying prophets. Do you hear what I say? The lying prophets. <clears throat> he said, my heart is broken within me. All my bones shake. I am like a drunk man, like a man overcome by wine because of the Lord and because of his holy words. And, and that's the way I feel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't try not to use this too much, you know, because I'm loud. And um, <clears throat> and then, you know, as I talk, you know, when I was an evangelist, you know, uh, going out to different places, uh, I asked one day, God, God, what is uh, the name of the, of the ministry? You know, because when you are right here, the ministry is Holy Rock Church. And, and that's the ministry, you know. But when you're going out, uh, most of the time you got a different name. You represent, you know, Holy Rock Church, you know, because that's your church. But your ministry got a different name. And a long time ago in 2008, I asked the Lord, you know, Lord, what is the ministry, uh, my ministry name? I know I'm an evangelist. I've been in Mexico, I've been in Guatemala, I've been in Honduras, I've been here, I've been there, you know, I've been in California, I've been in Texas. I've been preaching in Puerto Rico, you know, I've preached in Korea before. I preach, you know, um, so many different places. What is the name of the ministry? And, and uh, also that day I was complaining to the Lord. And I, I just say I was complaining that I was going to go to a church in Puerto Paloma, no, uh, Mexico. And uh, every time that I go to that church, the name of the church is uh, uh, the Temple of the, of the Beauty, you know. You know, the, the, the Gay of the Beauty. And um and I say, you know, the Lord, every time I go to that church, you know, I smack them down. I go there with no mercy. Are you telling them the way it is and telling them their faith? If they get angry, I rebuke them from the pulpit. Oh, yeah, that's something I have done always. If you need to be rebuked from the pulpit, I do that. You know, I'm not afraid to do that. So what happened is, as, uh, but I was comp not complaining, but telling, Lord, just give me a nice word for these people. And the Lord said, well, read chapter 23 of the book of Jeremiah to them. And in verse 29, I'm going to give you the name of your ministry. So I can't read it now. And the Lord said, no, just wait and you read it when you're there. And this chapter is talking about lying prophets, people that they are like morticians, that they want the deck look alike. They do, they want to tell people good things, but they will not tell them what they had to tell them, what they had to hear. And then verse 29, right there say, it is not my word like a fire. It is not my word like a hammer. It is not my word like a hammer that shattered the rock in pieces. And as I was reading in the pulpit, I started crying because I realized what the God told me. I had not called you to be a pacifier. I had not called you to be a comforter. I send the Holy Spirit for that. I call you to be a trumpet. I call you to be a voice in the desert. I call you, pastor, pastor, let the deacon do that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I call you, you know, to, to do a job. And that's what I'm going to do today. If you get offended, you can come in and right here and say, Brother Angel, you offend me. And I will pray for you. You hear what I say? You can't tell me you offend me. I will pray for you. Um, the scripture, you know, that the Lord gave me, it is in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to read that, you know, take it that home. We know the stories right there. I know. Trust me. You know the story. If you have been in church more than five years, I'm almost 100%, well, I say 50% sure that you know the story. If you have been in church, you know, 10 years, I'm 75% sure that you know the story. If you've been in the church for 20 years and you don't know the story, I'm 100% sure that you're a child. That you're a baby in Christ. So let's say, uh, this is 
my changes this morning. I'm going to read to you as the Lord just gave me. You know, I'm going to start preaching. But I'm going to read to you because I don't want to keep you right here, you know, for three or four hours. Dear Lord, <laughs> dear Lord Father, I thank you, Father, for everything. And I pray, Father, that, that you give me the boldness to do what I have to do this morning. I pray, Father, that, that you open the ears of, the, of, of, of my brothers and sisters, Father, that, that you touch their heart. And I, Father, I pray that you touch my heart as I preach to this word because I want to hear from you this morning, Father. So, Father, just like a uh, Deacon Gino preached, uh, pray, make me decrease so you increase. And I pray to you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. And this is what I wrote. I am constantly surprised, perplexed, and honestly, sometimes even I am disgusted at how people who claim to love God and claim to have, as said, Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and even testify of the moving of the Holy Spirit in their life, live far beneath or below their privilege as the children of God. Did, did you hear the statement? I'm disgusted and, and, and disappointed. I am perfect, per perplexed, you know, because we as the children of God, we live too low. We, we had expectation that there are no for children of God. If, if, if you are the kid of the king, if you are even the child or the president, the child or the governor, you always believe that there are things that you are benefit of. There are things that you're entitled to. There are things that you are rightfully entitled to. And you don't have to go around begging around, you know, for those things that they're entitled to. So, I am disturbed over the fact that many of us have been in church longer than we have been in anything else in our life. My case, I have been almost 51 years a Christian. And I'm being expect, you know, to be a grown up Christian, expect to be an elder. I'm not to be expect to be a little kid right there going around crying and complaining. I'm supposed to be the one of the team that may bring solution to problems. The one who pray for people. That's who I'm supposed to be. I'm a leader of, of the house of the Lord. And if you are more than 20 years in church and you are still acting like that, wing off. Take that bottle off of your mom or your mouth. Don't be keeping that pacifier pacifier in your mouth. It is time to check it out and start living in the way that God wants us to lead. Our life had to change. So I'm disturbed over the fact that that many of us have been in church longer than we have been in anything else. And yet while I, while we excel and achieve in all the areas of our life, we keep falling out in the area of spiritual development and growth. We are my baby, make money, we might do this, we might be good teacher, we might be good preacher, we might be good this, we might be good mechanic, we might be good people that do service, we might be good drivers in the road. But still, a, a development and a growth is not happening. It is time to, to go first grade and pass first grade. You cannot stay in first grade. You need to progress, you need to go to the next level. You got to challenge yourself. And, and, and this message, believe it or not, is a message of persuasion. I want to persuade you, you know, to be encouraged, to, to be uh, moving up. You need to move it up. Right. You need to change your life. So I say I'm disturbed that for the fact that we're still acting like a child. And keep falling out. We are singling. <laughs> this is funny. But sometimes we look like a, 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 this child, you know, that they go to McDonald's and what you want today, baby? I want a happy meal. Uh, yeah. I want a happy meal with nuggets. I want nuggets. Yeah. And I want a, 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 a apple juice or I want a, a, a little milk, chocolate milk, you know, daddy, uh, uh, mama. 
We are sometimes hook up to junk food. And I'm talking about junk and spiritual food. You are who called, you know, we are some, I, I go, if I say you, I included myself, okay, because there are people, Pastor Joe, that you say you, and they say, who he think he is? Yeah. That he pointing to me all the time. So right here, let's make a rule and a new policy. When I say you, I include myself. We got that clear? Say yes, raise your hand. Yeah. All right. So if I say you, and say he included himself. Right. Sometimes, you know, we are who called to what? To junk food, a spiritual junk food, things that, that don't help us. So, so much of whatever, and I think it's made to win. We need to win off of the battle. You know, no more this. <laughs> you got it. It is time to go away from that. It is time to go to the table food. What, what Psalm 23 say? He prepared table in front of my enemy. Come on. The table's there. Yes. It is like when we come right Wednesday night, we prepare a table. And what we're telling you, we are not going to serve you. Go ahead, pick it up what you need. And you go get your cheese, you go get your ham, you get your things. And you make it your sandwich. You make your mega sandwich. You put in lettuce. You put in tomato. Right? And then you go down there. You say, oh, right there. There, there, there are the baked beans. Mm. And they have also bacon. Come oh, man. Jesus got the table ready for us. He's talking about nakata. If we all... Honest today, many of us have entered in the church today. You came to church today, yeah, you enter. This place is a sanctified place. It's a place that be set apart for worship our God. And we come in to be satisfied in his presence. But sometimes, you know, our spiritual level, it is not allowing us to get satisfied in the presence of the Lord. We need to step up. We need to be the worshipers. We need to be the encouragers. We need to be the one that gives somebody the word. It is good to be carried out. Yes, it's okay. Sometimes I need you carry me, but I need to carry you. This is, this is a two-way street right here. Amen. I carry you, you carry me, you know, and we come for each other. We talk to each other. We pray for each other, you know. What about that? Can you pray for me for this? Can you pray this? Can you pray? This? That is selfish in first level. Actually, that selfishness it is already in the college level. And that's what the devil wants you, you know, a spiritual level in, in the God present holiness. He wants you to stay a baby, but he wants you to be a complainer. He wants you to be somebody that criticizes. He wants you to be the one that always asking for. He wants you to be the one that don't pray for that. They say, can you pray for me? Come on. You've been in church more than 20 years. You've been in church all your life. Come on. You need to change. Right. Pastor Joe, this really bothered me. Me too. And then you ask why we don't grow. I will not give a rifle to somebody that's 16, 15, 14, and 13 years old. They have to be at least 17 for me to put in a rifle in their heart and call them a soldier. And the longer you are still a baby, you cannot be a soldier. It's like my mama said, before you walk, you're going to crawl. And before you run, you're going to walk. And then after you walk and you run, you're going to become a professional athlete. Because you are being trained to continue progressing up. That's the problem we have. And I'm going to read this, you know, because I'm going to waste my time that I spend. If we will be honest today, many of us have entered the, in the church this place that is sanctified and set apart unto the worship of our God. And we have come in satisfied with your present spiritual. And, and what I mean, 
And we have come satisfied with the present level that we had. I wrote it wrong, but I know what is. And now you, you might say, well, I'm, I'm okay the way I am. No, it's not okay. It's not fair to me. It is not fair to me that you are a mediocre in the spirit. It is not fair. Look at somebody there said, it's not fair that you are depending on me all the time. It is not fair that we are the one all the time having the cross. Even Jesus, when he was moving the cross, he needs somebody to help him. And, and Simon or Cyrene, it was the one, it was pointed, grab the cross. I don't know how far he took the cross, but he grabbed the cross and he moved the cross for Jesus. You see, for Jesus. And we come to church only depending on somebody else. You come in right here, you oh, I just came to church. That's that's good enough. No, it is not. It is not, it is not fair, it is not right, it is disgusting. Because you know what gonna happen is the day when you get to the presence of the Lord, you might be saved, but benefits gonna happen, rewards gonna happen. You know that one of the of the beauty things to be in the army is when you walk, you know, with sight. Or your uniform with all those badges and all those metal, and now you got 34. I do have 34. And I walk there, you know, with my chest like a ha. I got my badges. I got my budget of prayer. I got my budget of worship. I got my budget of Bible no or knowledge. And I got my budget to feel the Holy Spirit. I got the budget of speaking in tongues. I got the budget to repute and reputing out their demons. I got the budget of discernment. I got the budget of knowledge. I got the budget of wisdom. And I got Salabia Hombala Ya Salabakoa. It is nice to have that. I think maybe the next time I preach, I'm going to put my uniform on. <laughs> and that's so nice when you say, what is that one? Purple heart. What about that one? I jump three times and come back jump. And what is that one? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> that one, uh, I rescue somebody. And what is that one? Good conduct. And when you say good conduct, it's discipline. It means you was you being a big, a, a good boy. How many spiritual badges you have? How many? It is not only nine. It's not only nine gifts. That's what Paul talked in one part of the portion of the Bible. Some play else, he spoke about 12 more. The other, if you're putting all them together, you know, Paul was talking about 32, maybe more, gifts in the Spirit. Speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, healing, grace, faith, patience. What you had. Are you satisfied with the badges that you had? Come on. This is not even here. Yes, you come ready to hear good singing. <laughs> and a good band. Yeah. The guy, the, the two main band right here, the, the bass and the guitar. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But we got instruments. So there's other places that they don't have no guitar, they got no bass. We have bass and guitar. If you're not happy with that, learn to play something. Yes. Talk to Amber. Yes. Talk to Amber. She's a teacher. Amber, when you come in right here, I'll play, I'll play that bass like an outcome. I made a mistake. <laughs> it is so hard to have a music teacher and you play in the bass and you know you out. I don't grade on Sunday. Uh, and Sunday you don't grade. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't want to be a complainer. <laughs> All right, good. You hear that, guys? Don't be a complainer. Yes, you came ready to hear good singing. Yes, you come to prepare, uh, prepare to hear a powerful prayer. And, and some are even hoping that 
the preacher might put in good a good show. Sorry. I'm not going to put in a show. If you expect me to put in a show, it's not going to happen. I'm not here to entertain you. And I usually not come with that expectation in church that somebody going to have to put in a good show, making you laugh. I try. That's why I say happy meal. Mm -hmm. I try. You know I like hamburger, right? Oh, God, Lord. I got a wife that she pulled me out from there. The Lord sent somebody. So, yeah, some putting a show. But few had come expecting to hear and live here today challenge. That's what I'm coming out of right here to challenge you. Change, different, stronger, better, more stable, more secure, more confident. I want you to be loose. I want you to be healed. I want you to be delivered. I want you to be set free. As a pastor, that's what I want from you, for you. I want you to be set free. I want you to be a strong. I want you to be loose in the spirit. I want you to become bold. I want you to, to grab and grow in the Lord and grow in the Lord and go out there and bring people in. Compel them to come to the church to have the house of the Lord full. Uh -huh. I know. But if you had come say him, and, and this is so true. Some people don't say this. They have come and saying like this. It say, uh, God, my, my storage is empty and I am available to you. Few have come saying, is there a word from the Lord that I can share with my brother and my sister? Oh, yes, you can't get a word from God and share with somebody. You don't have to expect only Pastor Joe and myself and a few other people just to get you the word. It is time for you to ask the Lord for a word for somebody. That God putting a burden in your heart for somebody. That God putting in your heart, you know, to intercede for somebody. And you come in right here and say, hey, are you doing okay? And, and they say, yeah, I'm not. are you sure you're doing okay? You need to do that. Very few come and say, Lord, I give myself away. Lord, I give myself away. Lord, I give myself away. Take me. Take me. Shape me. Form me. Change me. Inspire me. Give me your word. Give me your courage. Give me your strength. Make me bold. Make me a preacher. Make me a, a something that I can contribute to my church. Sometimes, Pastor Joe, you better stay home. I'm not suggesting you not to come to church. I'm talking just like Paul said. Shall we go and sin? Because we got a, such a great grace. Shall we go and sin more? So more grace we abound? No, no, no. My wife is, 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 is like a, he's shouting. Mary, I'm, I'm sorry, my friend, you know, but pray for me. I know, I'm not picking on you, you know. I, I know I shout, and I, I got people right here, you know, that they got a hearing problem, and when I shout, it's too much. That's what I say. I don't need this thing. No. No. Come to church, but come expecting something from God. That's why the Lord wants come and expect something. Right, Belize? Ven a la iglesia esperando que Dios te dé algo. You got the tongue. Can you interpret that for me, Pastor Joe? 
come to church expecting God's going to do something. That's right. See, that's a gift. I can talk in Spanish all the time. He can translate for me. We need translator too. All the tools of the spirit. We need translator that telling people the feeling that God putting on you for somebody else. That many times that God won't tell somebody I love you. And you might be the only vessel available for God put that feeling inside you and you're coming up. Come on right here, Alice. Come on right here. Come, 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 come. Come. I'm, I mean, come. Yes, come. Don't be afraid. There, there are times that God wants you to do this. Oh, my God. I love you. I love you. It's so tight. I love you. It's so tight, right? God wanted to train for that. Thank you, Pastor Joe. I need that too. <laughs> I love you, Angel. <laughs> Thanks the Lord. You say that, but you had you had showed that many different ways, Pastor Joe. There are times that God wants you to be the vessel that goes telling somebody I love you, to telling somebody I care. And how many times we have missed the opportunity to witness, to serve somebody. God wants you to change. He does. And then as you change, you know, Pastor Joe and I, we have to do less. Yeah, you should laugh in this one. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard, you know, for us to be the ministers and allow other people to work. It is hard. It is hard to delegate. You know why? Because we cannot delegate to children. According to the law, you cannot have Somebody less than 12 years old taking, taking care of the other children. They have to be asleep 12 years old and no more than one person. Because that's what they're capable of. To take care of only one and they have to be 12 years old. But at times that we can as a pastor and minister of the church, we cannot come with the people because the people are refusing to grow in the spirit. We are refusing to grow. And it is our duty, it is our obligation to take care of the flock, of the church, or, or the people in the church, or the members of the church. As a pastor and a co-pastor and as, as a deacon in the church, we have to take care of the church and we cannot put the life of so many in the life of children. The challenge today is you need to grow. Right. And I remember the rule. If I say you, I'm saying myself. <clears throat> For me to one day, Pastor George said, you are the senior pastor. I need to grow to that level. And he will not do that to me ever until I'm ready for it. And then I'm going to need a call pastor. And he's going to put that down to anybody neither. Somebody had to grow up to the position. Before you had the position. You complain that they don't let you do. Grow spiritually. You complain that they said you got ideas and nobody listens. It's because you are not having grow spiritually. It's not being shown. When children grow, they start changing. They start growing things right there. That you see them, and boys start, rawr, rawr, rawr. and they change their voice because they turn them in a man. They turn them into the woman. And the longer we hear this one, they, 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 they all wimpy little boys. We cannot 
chain. If we cannot delegate, we cannot give you nothing. Because you had no growth, because you had no coming to the level. The original message I have for this morning is you cannot give what you don't say have. If you are not mature in the spirit, you cannot be a preacher. If you're not mature in the spirit, you cannot be taking care of the homeless. You cannot be taking care of the needs of the church. You cannot even take the offering. For somebody to take the offering right here, going to be required what? That they say something about the offering. You have to be grew up on that. You got to show that you know how, what offering means and how to do it and when to do it and why to do it. Mary, you're right. I don't need a microphone. I don't need a microphone. Yeah, she's so right about it. She is right. God gave me this voice, you know, that's what I was a drill saying. I might be tiny, but back then. Yeah, you should laugh in this one too. I'm fat now. <laughs> you can't not get what you don't have. You have to be a spiritual field to pray for somebody. You know what happened, the one that they would not spiritual field. We know this guy, we know this guy, we know Jesus, we know Peter, we know John, we know this. We don't know you. And the demons mark it then and make it then run naked. Because the devil will strip you out of everything that you own. He will tear you up. He will strangle you. Because you try to get what you don't have. I was thinking about, you know, what we can be a good a spiritual aid, you know, something that I can. I was thinking about, you know, bring a basket and telling people get something from there. And I was going to put in five dollar bill there, ten dollar bill, one dollar bill. And I was going to put in a paper and say, you are no mature. You can do nothing. But then I say, you know, then they pick it up that paper. They might get offended. I was going to put in pay the candy, write the Milky Way. And I. I studied the sermon so late, you know, that I didn't wake up early enough. And he, I didn't got no time to go to the store to get candy and ask you to, uh, you got a Milky Way and, and they're coming out to you. Can, can you give me a, a sneaker? No, I got a Milky Way. Oh, you cannot give me a sneaker because you don't have a sneaker. Can you give me $10? You say, no, I, I got just a paper saying I'm not mature. Did you get it? What you had is a question. What you had? I have five more minutes. Yeah, you should laugh at it right here. <laughs> Pastor Joe is laughing because he knows what it is. Yeah, well, last week he preached a long time and that time was frozen. <laughs> the battery was not working. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when I asked, I even told my kid back there, right, Angel, did he finish already? <laughs> and I said, he haven't finished yet? I said, it's been longer. The scripture that I was going to use is uh, in the temple of the beauty. The lame man. The lame man. He will sit down right there because somebody took him there. He was crippled. You know the story. And, and what happened is, you know, he was crippled. They sit him there. I don't know if they're putting a blanket on their hand or a pillow or something, you know, so his hiney, you know, would be okay. I don't know. He was there. Whatever way they put his leg, that leg gonna stay right there the whole day the same way, unless somebody coming out relocated his leg because he will cripple. He will cripple, you know, from birth. And, and you know what happened? That the problem that happened in church, you don't, you are no born crippled. When you are born in Christ, when you are a spiritual born again, you are no crippled. Cripple happen in a spiritual way when you stop doing what you're supposed to do. 
you have to drink the milk so the bones grow stronger. Then after you drink the milk, you have to progress to the table of food. Mama going to get you mashed potato with mashed cattle and all these things soft and soft chicken and you eat that. And then later on, mama going to start giving you cheese and bread. And mama going to come out and give you more meat and rice and beans and all this good thing. And then mama, you know, is a mama is a black woman. She going to get you collard greens. <laughs> it's a collard green mama. They going to do that. And the mama, you know, is a white mama. And she going to get you pancakes. And she going to give you some other things in the morning. And she going to get you, a, a white mama going to get you old milk. Black mama going to get you grips. Right? That, that happened. And Puerto Rican mama will give you coffee and bread and cheese. That's the way we do. But the mama going to make sure that you're going to be eating something. You get fed so you grow up. And the mama says that she gives you too much and you're getting fed. She's going to cut down. And that's the Lord going to do the same thing with you. The Lord going to feed you. The Lord got the table ready for you. The Lord got everything ready. You need to start sit down at that table and have your table manner. You don't play with your spiritual food. You eat it. Because you play with your spiritual food, you know, you waste your time. And you waste the time of the maker. So you cannot play with your spiritual food. You have to eat it. And when you eat it, the Lord is going to give you more. And the more you eat and the more you grow, the more he's going to give you, going to give you a spiritual steak. And when you are eating a spiritual steak, you go chaka chaka, mm, 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 it tastes good. And then you are strong enough, you know, to come out and say, demon, in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, go out of his body. Sorry for that one. That I, I, demons are not deaf, you know, so we don't have to be screaming. This is a hard message, Pastor Joe. But it's not my word like fire. It's going to burn you. That's what the word says in Jeremiah. It is no my word like fire. It's going to burn in your heart. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable. But when the fire start touching your skin, your skin going to hurt. Your skin going to be burned. Your skin going to go from different levels. And the Lord said, I'm going to burn out of you all those bad habits. I'm going to burn out of you all that bad idea. I'm going to burn out of you the things that they are eating you in the spirit. And I can't say behind this one, yo, they'll say the Lord. He's going to burn out You have it. He's going to burn out You have it. You need to grow up. He's going to burn out the bad things that you do. He's going to burn out the way how you think. He's going to burn out the way how you complain. He's going to burn out the way how you gossip it. He's going to burn that out. He's going to get the hammer and he's going to smack you. He gonna shadow you, and then after he shadow you, he gonna pulverize you, and he to pulverize you. He gonna make you like a concrete. He gonna make you in something different, and you can say like this: I was a grain of sand in the desert, but now I am a beautiful temple in the presence of God. Yeah. <laughs> in the desert, a grain of sand. And now I'm a temple in the presence of the Lord where the Holy Spirit abide and live. I think this is enough. You got the picture? Yes. I want to say no more. God bless you. I love you. And yes, you can call me. Angel, thank you for calling me the other day. You don't know how happy you made me. Yes, you did. I give them an assignment and she called me. I forgot the name of the assignment, what we had to do. I hope that you did the paper. But today is Sunday, you know, I'm not grading today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you, you know. I pray that you be challenged. I pray that you be encouraged. I pray, you know, that you have feel something in the spirit today. God bless you. I love you. Pray for me. I don't know what is my next level, but for sure, I'm going to have a different level. And I want you to be part of my next level. God bless you, Pastor Joe. Amen.